Hello world. Back to my parcel. Uh, my Jauka, as we call such places in Polish. Summer is about to end and I'm trying to take the best and the most of it since it's still here. Um, I've been just recently wondering whether I should be making that video on that topic, which to some Christians seems very heretical and very controversial, but on the other hand, I think I should. Um, we as Latter-day Saints, just like most of Christians, regard the Holy Bible as a scripture uh, and a message from God. The same is told in our church about the Book of Mormon, of course, the Pearl of Great Price, the revelations given to Joseph Smith and his followers uh, as prophets of the latter days. But when speaking of the scriptures, a question keeps coming back. Are all those things that we have there, I'm thinking of the Book of Mormon, I'm thinking about the Holy Scriptures in the Old and the New Testament, Are do they convey facts? Well, truth be told, they don't. They do have some facts there, yeah, of course. For example, it is a fact that there is Middle East and it is a fact that there are Americas. Great. But, and well, many people that the scriptures mention did exist. But when we think of the facts, numbers, or other data that these scriptures have, they sometimes do not add up. They are kinda, they don't make sense at all. But does this fact that the scriptures do not have facts undermine the doctrine that they preach and they reflect. It doesn't have to be so. As some scholars was agree, agree with me in this respect, it is the legend that conveys the doctrine in the Holy Scriptures. One of the questions that keeps coming back in the biblical studies is, was Jesus really born in Bethlehem? Well, maybe he was, maybe he was not. Before I jump into any conclusion, I just want to remind all the believers and non-believers watching this video that it is not the role of religion to clarify the facts of nature, and it is also not the role of the sacred scriptures to provide facts and data. Holy Scripture is historical literature, but it does not have to be, and it is usually not, a trustworthy source of historical accounts. The presumed facts and figures given by the Holy Texts, be it the Bible, the Pearl of Great Price, or the Book of Mormon, are not sources of reliable historical information. They are symbols. That's it. Facts and symbols. Let's take number seven as an example. In the Bible, God creates the world in six days, and on the seventh day he rests. The prophet Elisha commands Naaman to wash himself seven times in the waters of the Jordan, that he may be healed. The author of the Apocalypse dedicates his work to the seven churches. In the Book of Mormon, Laman and Lamuel, Nephi's deceitful brothers, rebel against Nephi seven times. According to the Book of Mormon, there were seven communities living in the land of Zarahemla. Ammon kills seven people near the Sebus River. And now listen to this. According to the lineage of Jesus Christ as given by the author of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus was born in the 42nd generation counted down from the patriarch Abraham. 42 is 3 times 14 and 14 is 2 times 7. The lineage of the Savior is artificial. It has a symbolic meaning. One of the 19th century uh, presidents of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Wilford Woodruff, said once that he personally heard Joseph Smith say that um, the Book of Mormon is the most correct book 
ever written by human beings. Um, okay, good one. Uh, good joke, I would say. As a Latter-day Saint, I would really say that. If we understand these words as uh, in a very direct fashion, that the Book of Mormon conveys correct data. This is how we would understand correctness nowadays. And people would understand back then in the 19th century. But actually what Wilford Woodruff was saying and when quoting Prophet Joseph Smith was that the Book of Mormon is correct when we speak of the doctrine that it conveys. The doctrine and the elements of faith necessary for a human salvation that this marvelous book has. The Book of Mormon also gives crazy accounts of the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites. According to the Prophet Mormon himself, in the 13th Chronicle of the Book of Mormon, a number of 10,000 Nephites died at the hands of the Lamanites. It is widely known that no tribe in the Americas had so many members. Just like in the Bible, the number 10,000 in the Book of Mormon was intended to dramatize an event, to give away the significance of victory or the tragedy of defeat. The extraordinary numbers provided by the Book of Mormon give the records from the Golden Plates, a legendary mythological and most importantly, solemn features. The Book of Mormon is at times boring. The New Testament is boring at times. Well, the Old Testament is extremely boring. So what? It's not the role of the Holy Scriptures to be a piece of fine literature. Well, they might be, but they don't have to be. It's not why we have them. It's good if a religion has got a scripture that is really a pleasant reading, pleasant to the ear and pleasant to the eye, but that's not the role of a holy scripture. A holy scripture should make us think. And actually, with it being beautiful or pleasant to read or difficult, it should be a struggle. It should provoke to some deeper reflections impressions and thoughts on higher things. Let's come back to the birth of Jesus. According to the Book of Mormon, Jesus was supposed to be born at Jerusalem, at meaning in the vicinity. From the Gospel of Luke, we learn that the Lord is being born in Bethlehem. The Book of Mormon underlines that Jesus is the Messiah. It underlines his divine nature. Jerusalem is the city of the temple. The New Testament highlights Jesus as a caretaker and a peacemaker. Jesus is the bread of life. Bethlehem means the house of bread. When I was a kid, I always liked fairy tales. And the first book I read as a child was a summary of the Greek mythology by a fantastic great Polish scholar, Jan Parandowski. Well, later on other myths and mythologies followed. I've always been into religions and myths and mythologies. I, oh, I've always been into fairy tales. I love fairy tales, sagas, mythology, legends. And this is why I like the Book of Mormon. And this is why I like the Bible. Not because of the facts that supposedly uh, there are in these holy scriptures. Ah, not neglecting the fact that there are many facts there as well. I love these scriptures because of their legendary element. According to a great American scholar, an atheist, Marcus Borg, it is the myth and the legend that makes a scripture a holy scripture. 
It is the myth that makes religion a religion. The myth doesn't, doesn't have to be a lie. Legend is not a lie. The truth is and the fact is that this legendary element of the Holy Scriptures is this moment when the divinity meets the earthly things. It is the legend where our everyday life touches the unknown. It is the legend, the sagas, the mythology, the stories of wars, romance, loves and passions, betrayals. These are those wonderful, precious moments when we people, average people, experience the other, when we experience the beauty, when we come closer to the saving powers of the heaven. Okay, I just took a walk to a nearby forest before the sunset and I am lost, literally. Well, my Mormon friends might guess how I'm feeling right now, just like the brother of Amalekai, a person mentioned in the Book of Omni who took a longer walk into the wilderness, not to be ever found again. Is that a wasp? No, oh, they've got mosquitoes here. Great. Oh, and a dragonfly. Great. Okay. Anyway, guys. My Mormon heresy for today. Answering the question from the very beginning of the video. Was Jesus born in Bethlehem? Well, the Book of Mormon says that there were thousands of thousands of thousands dead... Uh, after the battle at Kumora, well, no, in my humble opinion, uh, the Bible says that the world was created in just six days, no, in my humble opinion. Was Jesus born in Bethlehem? Um, in my humble opinion, he was not. He was most probably born in Nazareth. And the only reason why uh, the birthplace of Jesus is placed in Bethlehem is to, well, give it a symbolic utterance. Jesus, the bread of life, Bethlehem, uh, the home of bread. Well, the fact that Jesus was most probably born in Nazareth doesn't make him less of a messiah. But the story uh, that we read in the New Testament, with him being born in Bethlehem, uh, underlines the fact that he is the incarnation of the great Adonai, of the great Jehovah of the Old. He is the incarnation of God and the Redeemer and Savior of the world. Some people might be wondering, why am I saying no to Jesus being born in Bethlehem? Well, I'm not saying no to that, let's be honest. I mean, I think that Jesus was God. So, he could have been born wherever he wanted. Anyway. Are the facts and figures given in the Holy Scriptures of any importance for our spirituality, of our religious life and our salvation? Yes, as symbols. 
Uh, some of them, though, are of no importance, and we have to acknowledge this fact as well. Is that a dragonfly? Uh, cool one. Anyway, so that will be it. My Mormon heresy for today. Jesus was probably not born in Bethlehem. My Mormon heresy for today. Facts and figures in the Holy Scriptures, including the Book of Mormon, are of actually no importance. Unless we can find some symbol of spiritual value in them. Another dragonfly. I love them. Do embrace the legend and the fairy tale of the Holy Scriptures. This is exactly where you will find the divinity and the spiritual power you can live with every single day of your life. Is that a dragon? No, dragons do not exist. They are characters from <laughs> mythology and legends. Okay, I don't know what that is, but I have to get out from here. Okay, so guys, see you next time, okay? See you.